Hi there, uh, Andy here again, and um, I just want to take a few minutes and tell you about a couple of really significant musical encounters that um, have uh, impacted refugee camps. Uh, but before I do that, let me just again just say a huge thank you. If you're a subscriber of mine uh, on my mailing list and you're watching this because you got an email from me, I really, really appreciate uh, you being part of the tribe and uh, of all the places on the internet you could be, here you are watching this video. So I really, really appreciate that. Thank you. Um, a couple of things. I got an email last year from one of my subscribers to say that a song that I'd written a long time ago, long before the current refugee crisis was even a thing, she wrote to me and said that, said that this particular song was having a, just a huge impact in the initiative that they had put together in a refugee camp in Germany. Uh, a lot of the, the folks who'd fled from uh, war-torn situations found themselves in old, disused uh, army camps there. And, and these folks had set up a little, little kind of kind of community, allowing them to kind of get together and just serving their needs. And uh, but they had um, kind of times of, of singing together. And this particular song, which is called "Your Name Is a Refuge, We Are Refugees," uh, had been translated into Arabic. And they were singing it, and it was just having this this profound effect. It was really a catalytic song for them uh, in kind of connecting with God. And and, uh, and, to, and for me, that was just hugely encouraging. I knew nothing about it. it didn't. Didn't, know, didn't even know the song was kind of out there doing that. Uh, and at the end of this video, I'll give you a link to where you can download that song and have a listen yourself. And then uh, after that, uh, a friend of mine from here has been taking teams in and out of the Greek refugee camps for a number of months. And uh, one of those trips, she invited myself and Joe Hogg, Joanne Hogg, who many of you know. Um, in fact, it was Joe who actually who flagged it up to me and said, uh, listen, do you fancy joining me in this trip? And, because the idea was we'd take some music and do some music in the refugee camps. Now, on one level, that seems like a like a crazy thing to do. There's, there's just huge uh, need in there, and, and part of the trip exposed us to that. We we had a, the opportunity of working in some of the warehouses that were that were run by volunteers trying to meet some of the very practical needs of the people in those camps in desperate situations. Uh, um, Karen, who was running our running our particular teams. By the church, she had this uh, protocol approved by the Greek government for distributing vitamins to uh, mothers and children who, just by because of they were there, their their, di their diet uh, was really insufficient in lots of ways. So there's lots of kind of very uh, human, practical, compassionate needs that uh, needed to be addressed. I mean, why why take a guitar and sing? Well, we had the most profound effect. It was one of the families in one of the refugee camps who we we had connected with organised this little kind of impromptu gig for us and Joe. And I, we, we took our guitars and we played some songs. And it, was, it was the most profound moment. It, it actually triggered um, a, a time of people being prayed for and being miraculously healed. Uh, perhaps later on I'll get to tell some of those stories of, 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 the, of the details of that. But it also created an atmosphere of community where we got to kind of share some of our stuff and uh, some of the folks from Syria got to, to uh, uh, share and invite us into their kind of cultural expression of music and dance and all the rest. And it was, on, on one level, it just kind of opened opened up uh, something, allowed people to experience something beyond the mundane and the challenges of which they were living. Some of the stories that we heard on that trip were just harrowing and heartbreaking. Uh, fundamentally, people don't want to be there. In an ideal world, they'd be back in their homeland, living their normal lives, getting on with their business and all the rest. But they find themselves in this no man's land because of uh, circumstances beyond their control, which they had to flee from. Uh, I know it's a complex issue and I know there's a whole lot of other stuff around it, but uh, when you get in touch with the humanity of what people are going through, you realise that the simple act of taking some music and taking what you carry and expressing it in that environment uh, it can be such a catalyst for healing and allowing hope to, to kind of spring up. So that's the point in taking music uh, into refugee camps. Uh, first of all, I, I thank you for, for hearing out. Thank you for being a part of what I do. I really appreciate uh, the support that you guys uh, actively do and, and both, uh, I mean I make my music available for free but some of you choose to buy it and I really appreciate that it helps both keeping body and soul together but also uh, when it comes to doing these non-commercial projects uh, it helps with that so again I, I couldn't can't thank you enough if you're um, somebody who's already on my mailing list uh, you are officially awesome uh, thank you if, uh, if you haven't yet subscribed uh, you can sign up at andyrogersmusic.com or thecavesessions.com and uh, I'll keep you up to speed with, uh, with what's going on. But once again, thanks for hearing me out, and uh, we'll speak soon. Bless you. Bye.